role-based user authorization can give you fine-grained control over which actions a user can perform in your app. Many apps use this strategy, such as Stack Overflow and Reddit, to control the types of data that can be modified by users. In this episode, we're going to implement role-based access control with Firebase and Angular 4. Our users are going to have three different roles. The admin role can read and write anything. The author role can read and edit, but not delete. And the reader can only read data. Since we can't actually edit the data on the Firebase auth object, we need to create our own custom user class. We'll do this by saving our own custom data to the real-time database, and in the user object, we'll have a roles object, which can either have an author, reader, or admin attribute. In the Angular app, I'm going to use a TypeScript interface to make sure that the user roles can't be anything other than a reader, author, or admin. Then I'm creating a custom user class, which is where we can define any custom data we want to add to the user object. By default, we'll pass the constructor the Firebase auth data and use that to set an email photo URL, and then we'll set the reader value to true by default. So a new user will look like this when they sign up in the database. So now we can build an auth service to actually log in and log out the user. We're going to use Google OAuth as the login method. So we import the Angular Fire database as well as Angular Fire auth and our custom user class. And we're going to set our current user as a behavior subject instead of the Angular Fire auth observable. This will give us more flexibility when we start working with router guards. Inside the service constructor, we subscribe to the Angular Fire auth auth state observable. Then we can add switch map, which will give us access to the auth user ID. Then we can return the location in the database that has this user data, which in this case is a user collection followed by the user ID. If the auth object is undefined, we just return a null observable. Then we can call subscribe, and whatever we get back is what we'll apply to the behavior subject. If the user's logged in, this will be the data from the database, and if they're not signed in, it'll just be null. From here, we'll add a method for the user to sign in and sign out. I'm just going to go over this quickly because it's the standard information you'll find in the Angular Fire 2 documentation. The only difference is when the user logs in, we want to update the database with whatever user information we want to save there. We can do this by creating a new user object, and then we'll check the database to see if this data is already defined, and if it's not, we'll go ahead and update it with the default data from this class. So this code will only run when we have a brand new user signing up for the first time. With that out of the way, we can actually start building some authorization rules. Our database has some posts in it, and we want to limit access to who can create, update, and delete these posts. We can create a post service to handle this logic. So we'll import the Angular Fire database, our auth service, as well as Lodash. We set a variable user roles, which is an array of the roles that are actually assigned to the current user. We can define this variable by subscribing to the user from our auth service, and then we'll map the roles down to an array of strings. This will make the code for our rules a little less verbose. The next step is to create a couple functions to actually get the data from the database. And then we can finally start writing some rules related to this data. First, we're going to write a helper function, which is going to see if there are any matches between two arrays. The reason is that every rule is going to have an array of allowed roles, and we want to make sure those roles match the actual user roles. This makes the authorization logic very straightforward. We just define an array of the allowed roles, and then we call our helper function to see if there's a match between those roles and the user's roles. For example, the can delete rule only allows admin users, so if an author or reader user tries to perform this action, it'll return false. So we can lock down specific actions in the TypeScript directly by wrapping them in an if statement. In this case, users can only edit posts if the can edit rule returns true. If not, it'll just say action prevented. And we can also perform the same logic for deleting posts just using the can delete rule. If we go into the app, we can see we're currently logged in with just the reader role. So if we try to edit or delete a post, we'll see this action prevented message in the console. But if we go into the database and give this user the author role, we should get different results. So now that we have the author permission, we can try to delete a post, but we'll still get the same message because we're not authorized to delete. But we should have access to edit the post. So we click edit, we go in here, and we edit the data, and it should update in the database. When we go back, we can confirm the post does have the new text that we just entered. Then we can go ahead and add the admin role in the database, and we should have access to now delete the post. When we click delete this time, we can see the post is deleted, and we don't get any kind of error in the console. 
It's also important to point out that we could just hide the delete button from the DOM altogether. And we can do this by using ngif along with the can delete function that we had defined in the post service. So just keep that in mind as an option when you're securing data on the front end. Another option you have for managing roles is with router guards. So here we're gonna build a router guard that only allows the author role to access a certain route. The logic is very similar to what you just saw in the post service. We first subscribe to the current user from our auth service, and then we map the roles down to a Boolean, which will return true if they have the author role, and then false if they do not. Then we can use the rxjs do operator to run some arbitrary code, which is useful if you want to redirect the user or raise like a toast message. So when a user tries to navigate to this route, Angular will subscribe to this observable, and it'll either return true or false. If it's false, then they won't be able to access that route. So we can apply it to individual routes by going into our app router. First, make sure the guard is in your providers array. And then on individual routes, you can add a can activate array and add that guard to it. If we try to navigate to this route without the author role, we'll see the route is blocked and we'll also get this route prevented message in the console. And the last thing we're going to look at is securing the database on the back end. We can use Firebase database rules to ensure our data integrity, even if our front end JavaScript code is hacked. As you can see here, I've removed the can delete rule from Angular, and our user only has the reader rule, so they shouldn't be able to delete posts, but we still get an error from Firebase because we've set some backend database rules. The rules are kind of hard to read, so I recommend going to angularfirebase.com to get the full code, but we'll go through it really quickly here. First, we set a rule for reading data, so we make sure that the user with that auth ID has the reader attribute in the database. And we do this by traversing the database with the root variable, which is provided by Firebase. For writing data, first we set the rule for the author, so we make sure that they're providing new data, which means they're not deleting the post. And then we traverse the database again, making sure that they have the author role on their profile. Otherwise, for admin users, we just need to make sure that they have the admin role on their profile, and they can create, update, or delete any data that they want. That's it for role-based access control with Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want the full code, head over to angularfirebase.com. And if you want access to exclusive content as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting, consider becoming an Angular Firebase Pro. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.